Kelly Kellogg and thank you for joining me today. We are going to explore putting a background down on watercolor paper and then painting over it using negative space shapes to make a St. Patrick's Day card. So this is what we're going to be doing. So let's go do it. So let's do a watercolor St. Patrick's Day card. And I am going, I'm getting the paper wet. I have it taped down to a marble, a marble tile. And I'm using, the purple is um, 3M. It's called Delicate Surface. Uh, gentle Removal Washi Tape, Washi Painters Tape. Found this in the painting section, like at Home Depot or Lowe's, you know, one of those places that carries all the painting supplies. And um, by paint taping down my paper. One, I've created a border, and two, it um, will help keep the paper flat. And so I'm just playing with greens today. I'm just going to slap on a few greens and make a background. And, um, and once this is dry, I will work in some, um, I'll, I'll work in my, my little St. Patrick's Day shamrock theme over the top of it. So we're going to do like some silhouetting. One thing to remember is that your watercolors always dry lighter than they look wet. So now they look all nice and intense and saturated and they will dry a whole lot lighter. So some of these I'm trying to slap on some good dark color here and Just for kicks and giggles, I've got a can of air here that I'm going to use and just see. Not really wanting to dry it, but to create some splattery. Probably does better when it goes off the edge over here, like we've got that, and that's not going to be part of our painting. But we will let this dry. We'll come back to it. Um, when it's all done, when it's dry, and maybe add some layers, do some more to it. But this is our first step. It's our background. So we'll be back in a bit. I decided I wanted to add a little more dark, a little more intense color in a few places, just to sort of beef it up while it's still wet. have a blue color. This is Maya blue, but it's sort of a blue green that I just put into a pot. So it's sort of fresh. So it's going to go on a little differently than my other colors, which I've squeezed out of a tube, but I've allowed to dry. So fresh paint always goes on a whole lot differently than reconstituted paint. Not that there's anything wrong with reconstituted paint by any means but it's just that it goes on just a little thicker, lovely, different. All right, now I'm going to let it dry. I'm going to quit playing with it, and we'll be back in a bit. Okay, so everything is dry, and um, I, it's time to draw the shamrock, and we're going to cover up most of this. So I know it just sort of sounds like, Lee, it's so pretty. But I'm going to put acrylic paint over it just I, it will lift off some of this, but it will cover opaque. So I've got three different kinds of paint, two golden and one paper artsy. And what I'm showing you here is how to judge opacity. So this one, you can sort of see the lines through here. There's, there's a, a, a streak with lines, so it's white and black, so you can see through. So this one, I would say, is semi-opaque. This hooker green, you can barely see the lines there, barely, barely. It's it's not 100% opaque. This one is opaque. Plus they tell you it's opaque, but you can't see the lines here. Paper Artsy has the same lines there as does Golden right here. And that's, a, that's actually a sign of a good quality company because all of these little bits have been hand painted on. So this was hand painted on the label to show you your um, opacity. And it's good to know that. So in this case, like I wanna cover this stuff up, that this 
this phthalo green won't be as dark as like the hooker green or the jade. So we're gonna play around with those and do some painting. We need to grab a palette and we'll be in business. So I have a small piece of uh, craft sheet here. This is Teflon, it's, so it's glass. And I've used this one in the past for embossing, working in a toaster oven. It's got a little embossing powder on there, sort of cooked on, but it's not going to hurt anything that we are doing. And I'm actually going to mix these two paints. And I don't need a whole lot. I need just a, probably a tiny bit for both of them. And the other thing I need to do is grab my acrylic paint brushes, not my watercolor brushes, because a, um, acrylic is just not, you want a different brush for it. You don't want to be using your good watercolor brushes on um, with acrylic. It just doesn't do any good. No good to them. So I'm actually going to sort of draw my my shamrock here. So that I can sort of kind of see where I'm going to be painting. And I know that that's probably near impossible to see on the camera, on the screen, but that's okay. I should do is do this. There, now we have the outline. And I'm adding a little water to this combo because both of these paints are a little thick. You can use this technique for a whole variety of, of um, different ways of making cards, backgrounds. This is sort of like negative space painting because we're leaving this just as the background and painting over everything else so that we're leaving the negative space po positive. It sort of contradicts each other, but that's the way it's working. All right, there's that much painted. I'm going to go clean up, get rid of this, clean up this stuff off of here, clean out my brush, and then we will remove the tape and move forward with making this card because this is drawing pretty fast, which is nice. Actually, I see a few little spots. I want to add some more. All right, back in the jiffy. Okay, it's time for the great reveal to remove the uh, painter's tape, the washi tape. And this has been, it's taking off a little bit of paper. Normally I don't leave the tape on overnight and this has been, 
think two days because of my schedule, work and stuff. But overall, it looks lovely. Now we could take a black pen and outline this, a white pen and outline it. I could, I may just leave it the way it is. I think it looks lovely. Um, I have a, a green A2 card and you can see by having taped the edges, I've created a frame. So there we have it. It's like happy St. Patrick's Day. And be sure to sign your card, sign your work so that um, everybody knows that it's an original because that that makes a difference. People like that. People like to know that you made it. It's an original. So cool beans. There we are. Thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I hope you have a little inspiration from today's not too long video and that you go out and make some St. Patrick's Day cards or Easter cards, whatever you want to do. It's all coming up or birthday cards. You could do birthday cards this way. It's just the whole bunch of different things you can utilize this whole negative space of putting your background down, sort of outlining your shape and then painting around your shape to make it stand out. I'm Lee Kellogg. You can find more at my website, leekellogg.com. Uh, you can reach out to me, leave a message down below on YouTube and I will respond and I do answer back. So look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.